Come to me, all who, are, who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. There's a hymn that was written circa early 11th century. And it's called Christians to the Paschal Victim. The reason I point this hymn out is because this shows the life of Ward Yonker. Christians to the Paschal Victim, all for your thankfulness and praise. The lamb, the sheep has ransomed. Christ who only is sinless, reconciling sinners to the Father. Death and life have contended in that combat, stupendous. The prince of life who died reigns immortal. Reconciling sinners to the Father is only the work that Jesus Christ can do. Holy baptism. You will find not so much a peaceable resistance between infant and clergy, but rather a violent ripping off of the old Adam and the soothing waters of the new. Art and Grace, you were there. You were there when Ward had that old Adam ripped off of him and that new Adam placed upon him. And though they would always, do, they would always combat themselves, faith forever poured into the eyes, ears, and heart of your son. Christians to the Paschal victim, we have no other recourse. We have nothing else. Christians to the Paschal victim, offer him your thankful praise. The lamb, the sheep, has ransomed. The mighty one, Christ himself has ransomed the sheep. And how so? To the cross. The lamb, the sheep, has ransomed. Christ who only is sinless. And this is the point. Christ who is only sinless, reconciling sinners to the Father. In that react reality, we have what the Father does. We, we can see the union between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God the Father looks at His servants through the eyes of His crucified Son. Those blood-stained eyes. And the giving out of the Holy Spirit. And we make such little bit of these things. Salvation being one... Ah, so easy for us to go, well, salvation was really easy because, hey, it was passive. It was a passive thing. I was washed. By who? My pastor. No. Wrong. Washed by Christ because reconciling sinners to the Father is what He does. Death and life have contended. This is very true. Started on December the 27th. And it went all the way. You telling me they were going to take him off the ventilator at 1 o'clock. And I got the call at 102, 108. 208, I'm sorry, 208. One hour and eight minutes later. And I thought about that for quite some time as Ward has been my friend for years. And when I thought about that, this was the first thing that popped into my head. Death and life have contended. He fought, but he was asleep. He was in a coma, but his faith fought for him. But what happened in the end? Life beat death. 
Ward is here. A death has already been overthrown. Christ our Lord, the Prince of Life, who died, reigns immortal. He reigns for me. He reigns for Ward. He reigns for you. And that is not that's the most sweetest thing that I can tell you today. That Christ reigns immortal, which means that we have a 100% guarantee that Christ reigns for us in heaven. Not as some dictator, but as a loving king. Who has, res who, who has rescued us by sacrificing Himself. Prince of life, who died, reigns immortal. And then we see these words. Speak, Mary, declaring what you saw when wayfaring. The tomb of Christ who is living. The glory of Jesus' resurrection. Bright angels attesting the shroud and the napkin resting. My Lord, my hope is arisen. Go to Galilee. To, to Galilee he goes before you. Ward was ordained into the office of the holy ministry because he wanted to serve. He wanted to feed people. He wanted to wash people. And he wasn't so ignorant as to think that he was the one doing it. He was confessional enough to believe that Christ is the one who baptizes. Christ is the one who feeds. And so he wanted to tell others about what he, what he saw at the tomb in his baptism. The tomb of Christ who is living. The glory of Jesus' resurrection. Bright angels attesting. The shroud, the napkin, resting. And now, even in that second part of his life, he now, with bright angels, attests to the Lord, to his hope, to the arisen one, to Galilee, he goes before us. Christ indeed from death is risen, our new life obtaining. Have mercy, Victor King, ever reigning. Amen. Alleluia. This last stanza is the stanza that's true now. He has died and yet he has not died with no hope. We don't look towards death with no hope. We look towards death with the assurance that if Christ is for us who can be against us? St. Chrysostom has a sermon that I want to kind of bring out to light. And I didn't write it down word for word, but there's something here that he did write, and I think it's worth saying. Take comfort today. Though your pain pierces you like a knife, or a spear in, the, in your breast. Remember that today we plant your son as a seed. And this seed will become wheat. And dear Lord, it will gather, he will gather the wheat into the barn. Remember that today we plant your son in the grave. But by the resurrection of Christ, he will grow that wheat and our dear Lord will gather him into the barn the same is true for all Christians art and grace since you came to Augustana you have meant so much to me and I love you dearly I wish I could be more help during this time but the only thing that I can give you is this. Remember your baptism. Because when our time of dying comes, that's all that we have. Jesus in those waters. Jesus 
in that sacrament. Jesus, whose baptism connects to the cross. Jesus, whose baptism of us connects to his resurrection. Jesus, the one whose baptism he carries with him into heaven. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen.